Hello and welcome back to the port, I'm the Gav Major and this is a review of the Tech Tree Tier 4 Russian cruiser, the Kotorovsky, available as early access and uh, fully researchable in the next patch. Now this is a Tier 3 and 4 game of Capture Base and Neighbors and the only two of a V1070, Sub, Kotorovsky, Ganova, Ganga, Orion, Wyoming, Nevada, Nevada Division. Spawn on the right flank and um, doing what Russian cruisers usually do, try and stay at as, at as much range as possible. Uh, the reason being is um, if anything touches you, you will get hurt, unfortunately. So, the Kotrofoski, um although apparently one entered service according to Wargame in their, uh, in their blur in the game, um, I can't find anything historically wise regarding this cruiser or its design. Apparently it's a design of a Russian light cruiser from the 1930s but what project number and even if it actually did exist is in incredibly hypothetical I guess you could say and so really it is it falls into that realm of another fantasy ship I guess you could say for the Russian Navy but if you've been playing the game for a while you're probably already quite used to the fantasy Russian Navy. So, um, in comparison to the other Tech Tree Tier 4 cruisers, obviously fully upgraded, fully upgraded, no commanders, no, uh, no uh, battle boosters or anything like that. So, survivability, um, you're looking at the second lowest base HP of only uh, 25,700. Now you do have an average torpedo reduction of 10% um, and it's worth noting that not many tier 4 cruisers actually do have a torpedo reduction so your average out of the ones that do come equipped with it, um, I guess is the best way to put it. Regarding the armor scheme, uh, I've already kind of hinted it's, it's not amazing, uh, but we'll take a look at that in the, uh, in the port view. So here we are back in the port taking a look at the arm skin of the Kotrovsky. Um Let's start off with the bow and the stern plating because this is um, pitiful is the best way to put it. You're looking at 13mm which is um, not capable of really stopping anything so even a 8 inch cruiser or a 6 inch cruiser uh, will be able to overmatch uh, your bow and your stern so therefore um, don't bow tank anything probably not even the destroyer is the best way to put it moving on to the superstructure the superstructure has uh, about the same level of plating apart from obviously the, uh, the command system um, so again this is just another large area which can be overmatched by pretty much everything in the large half stall area which can be saturated with high explosive shells moving on let's take a look at the upper armoured belt um, which is uh, 16 millimeters on the side, 16 millimeters on the deck, and uh, 10 millimeters on the bulkhead. So what that means is your upper arm about on your deck is sufficient to resist uh, 8 inch gun AP when angled. Uh, so against cruisers, you want to be angling, um, trying to get those AP shells to bounce off. Uh, but obviously HE is going to still hurt. Uh, but what that really does mean is um, beware of battleships. You don't really have a lot of armor. I mean, the only armor you got left that will be able to ricochet battleship shells is what you can see on the screen now um, so let's go on to the turrets and the barbettes um, 35 to 50 millimeter plating which is uh, more than capable of ricocheting all types of AP shells um, if it hits it uh, ricochet out oh, angle because you're saying the barbettes going all the way down to the citadel which is quite nice citadel it's big it's long it's above the water line it's everything you probably didn't want to be hearing um, now obviously is plated in 35 millimeter plating front sides and top which is kind of good news in fact 50 mils on the top um, so uh, that's going to be quite resistant but generally what this means is that your citadel when angled can resist uh, pretty much all AP shells however if you get caught where the shell can't ricochet it's probably going to hurt quite a bit potentially um, and with that citadel being so exposed it's um, it's not going to be good news if you get caught out broadside on or not at an acceptable angle so um, unfortunately generally the arm scheme of the Kotrovsky is pretty pitiful I guess you could say um, but something that you kind of come to expect from tier 4 cruisers in general. Oh well, let's get back to the game and see how we're doing. Well, welcome back. Let's move on to the artillery. What are we looking at here? Oh, we're looking at eight number six inch guns mounted in four dual gun turrets. We have a A turret with B turret super fine up front. And then we also have a uh, y turret with X turret super firing at the rear. So that does mean you've got two turrets fore and aft. 
Now these do have the joint second longest range of 14.1 kilometers. They also have the fourth quickest reload of nine seconds. Average turret traverse speed of 22.5 seconds per 180 degrees of rotation. Regarding the shells, you have the third lowest HE shell damage of 2150, a second lowest fire chance of only 8%, and the third lowest AP shell damage of 3150. When it comes to the DPMs, you're looking at the third highest HE DPM, second lowest fires per minute, and the second highest AP DPM. Moving on to the torpedoes, it's nothing to get really excited about, but you do have two triple launchers, one per side, and so that gives you a nice idea of the uh, arcs in them. And as you can see on the minimap, very short range. Yeah, so the shortest range, or joint shortest range, I guess maybe, of uh, four kilometers. Now, you do have the an average reload speed on these launchers of 70 seconds and they do have the third highest damage of 14,400 per torpedo. Can we touch the ganga? Have a look, have a look at that. Now these do have the joint fastest speed of 64 knots so even though they're only going to go four kilometers they will get there very quickly uh, but they do have the second largest detection of 1.3 kilometers um, but then again, uh, that's 1.3 kilometers out of their four kilometer range, so it's not <laughs> it's not exactly like it's going to be much of a surprise. Usually, if you're getting within four kilometers of a Russian cruiser, you can expect there to be torpedoes in the water, and you should already be predicting them, is the best way to put it, because they will just come fast um, and rapid at you. Now, let's see if we can actually survive the Ganga. Oh, he's led a bit to the rear, so we might be able to live here. Oh, but we still take a, a big hefty chunk of damage, which is uh, quite typical uh, for the Kotrovsky. Um I've never gone pop so many times before at a cruiser, is the best way to put it. Going on to maneuverability, she's the third fastest at 35.5 knots. Second largest turn in circle of 850 meters. Uh, furthermore, fourth slowest rudder shift of 7.4 seconds. Now when it comes to the concealment, you have the second largest detectability of 11.9 um, uh, kilometers. Now you have a detectability by air of 7.2 kilometers and detectability when firing smoke of 5.7 kilometers. When it comes to the consumables, again, nothing really exciting going on here either. You do have sonar, you get uh, two of those consumables. This has a 90 second duration and 180 second reload. We detect ships up to 3.7 kilometers away and torpedoes up to 2.7 kilometers away. Furthermore, you also have three catapult fighters, and uh, these have a 100 second duration and an 80 second reload. So always down in the description will be the command build and the modules used, although um, command build is just connects off and I've just gone for as much range as you can really, I guess you could say. Modules wise, uh, I've got aiming systems module 1, uh, there's not really much choice, uh, you've only really got the one slot and it's basically secondaries or AA or aiming systems I guess are the main choices really. And uh, at this range, trying to hit a B-170 is going to be a little bit awkward. So, um, general comments on the uh, Kotrovsky, general opinions. Um, ugh, she's certainly not my kind of cruiser. I'm not really a big fan of this uh, uh, long range um, because you're fragile style of gameplay. Um, the lack of armor is horrible <laughs> it's the best way to put it I, I really don't like that lack of armor and it's pretty much if anything touches you you're uh, you're going to get hurt um you're very much it feels like you're very much like an anti-cruiser cruiser potentially because you can only really ricochet eight inch guns reliably but against any battleship um it's very hard i i personally find the reason being is her maneuverability is pretty poor um, so you can't really dodge or dodging can be quite difficult um, you've only really got speed on your side your rudder shift is a little bit painful and even if you do go for like full-on maneuverability builds it's not going to be beneficial um, I'm literally looking at a very quick death here considering there's like five battleships or or four battleships and two destroyers so uh, not going to be fun 
but we will endeavour to try and keep the wiring at touching distance and see if we can use our, uh, our guns to engage. One thing I do find with the Kotroposki, I guess you could say, is that the um, the shell grouping is quite good. So it can make this kind of like long range sniping style of battle feasible because you can actually hit the target, which is obviously advantageous. Being able to actually hit the target is always a good thing. Um, but obviously, that does mean that we have a bit of a downside when it comes to if you ever get shot at. Because you want to stay at the edge of range, therefore, that usually means you end up maybe coming to a stop or something like that when you get to the edge of your range because obviously you don't want to be leaving your range but you don't want to be getting any closer than you need to and unfortunately that usually means that you find yourself mm, trying to get behind islands um, or uh, st op stopping in open water now it's potential that I'm just playing this cruiser incredibly wrong and I'm just not a big fan of this playstyle I, I have to confess but We'll see how this goes. Um, whether or not we can actually find that at the moment, but we're practically broadside onto three battleships, but we haven't really got much choice here. Um, it's uh, a do or die kind of moment. And even HE, as you can see from the wiring, just hurts an absolute ton. The game is pretty much over and done with, so we might as well show the survivability of this uh, cruiser, but yes. We spotted something. Not sure what though. Ooh. And as you can see, even though I spotted the view on 70, he's not even within torpedo range. <laughs> Which uh, potentially showcases the, the joys of the uh, torpedo range of the Russian cruisers. Right, it's just me left. Um, how would I like to die? Is uh, going to be the question now. You know, we might be able to take the Super out with, uh, with us, which would be nice. Well, there we go. But there, there we go. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I'm, I'm not exactly overjoyed with this cruiser in any means, and I still have my preferences and this this ship is nowhere getting anywhere near changing my preferences for the tier. Um let's see, forty seven thousand damage is not a great game, let's be honest. Edge one hits on target, eight fires and only the one kill on the soup. Uh, but still getting first place on the team. But uh this this cruiser, it it's been a pain to grind and probably after this review I will never play it again is the is the honest return on that one. But I've managed to make a decent profit, I guess you could say, 104,000 credits with premium count after a ship service cost only 17,000 credits. So I can't really grumble too much there, but I haven't been having fun, here's the best way to put it. But you might, and if you do, that's, that's good for you, I guess you could say. Um, if you did enjoy this review, feel free to give it a thumbs up. If you enjoy this content, content, feel free to subscribe. Down in the description, command build, modules, Patreon link if you want to support the channel. Patreon is a non monetized channel. And email just the channel if you want to send any of your own game captures for the community spotlight video. Until next time, I'm the Gareth Major, and back to the port. Hey, hey, clear the way. Here comes the Galloping Now, hey, hey, clear the way, here comes the galloping hay.